May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, Happy Easter. It's wonderful to see you all here. And alive at Easter, and I certainly hope that you're all alive at Easter today. And that you're also prepared to see our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, just as Doubting Thomas, so that we also begin to really realize what God has offered us. One of the things that I'd like to note real quick is the Easter pageant that was presented today, Elena, the one that was at the lectern, Elena actually wrote that. You know, she was what, 12 years old, 11 or 12 years old, but she actually wrote that and put it together and she tried to direct the kids, but as you can see, kids are kids. So, but I just wanted to let you know that if you see Elena, you can thank her because she did write that entire little play for, for the kids and for our Sunday school. Jesus' death and resurrection through God solved humankind and sin problems made possible through the forgiveness of guilty sinners and also the return to Heavenly Father in harmony and also happiness. And that's where we all want to go one day. When we leave this earth as we know it, we want to enter into the eternal life which is promised to us through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. The death of Jesus is beyond full human comprehension. No group of words or phrases contains is adequate to completely the statement of what took place on Calvary. Nothing we can say can really explain to us what happened in Calvary because we weren't there. But we certainly have the Bible. We certainly have the different prophets and apostles that have written and explained so much to us so that we can get that reality of who Christ was and what Christ has done for us. The Lord's disciples had great difficulty trying to understand the mystery of his tragic death. For them, his death was a cruel, horrible murder at the hands of wicked, ungodly men. It was a public disgrace and a personal, public, political tragedy. So if we think about that for a moment, what is that really saying to us? Down through history, people have been asking the question, why, how? So let's look at Job for a second. If a man die, they shall live again. We find that in Job 14, 14. It remained for Jesus to answer the question. He did rise from the dead back to life. He promised eternal life to all, to all of those who trusted and were willing to follow him. The apostles were unable to comprehend this until his resurrection, until his resurrection from the dead demonstrated the reality of immortal life. Jesus came to deliver. He came to deliver us from the fear of death. You can find that in Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. Deliver us from the fear of death. By his resurrection from the dead, he demonstrated the power the power over death improved the reality of immortality. And Jesus promises we have a victory over death because he conquered death and we can look forward by faith to a similar victory. And the highest act of wisdom put to faith and trust in a Savior who loved us to the extent that he was willing to die for us. And it was so divine that he conquered death and also the grave for you and for me. Christ alone deserves to be the Lord of our lives. But there again, Lord of our lives is an individual decision. Pastor and Peter and I were talking about it this week and again this morning. It's an individual decision that each of you make separately. We can help through prayer, through meditation, through hymns, through
through sermons, through time spending together and loving each other. But this decision is yours. It's not mine. It's not Pastor Peter's. It's your decision where Christ fits into your life. Christ alone can lead us through both eternal life and an earthly life to the eternity beyond. Let the risen Christ become real, very real in your heart today. I know for me, it took a long time to even truly begin to understand where Christ was in my life. And many of you have probably been in the same situation. A lot of times we think about science and think about the different ways and try to disprove these different things. But let's go a little further. Following the test in the wilderness, Jesus began his public ministry. John the Baptist continued to point to Jesus, claiming that everything God had promised centered on this one man. This was a startling news to the religious elite. And John was asked to explain himself. Imagine skilled religious lawyers questioning John the Baptist. Now we know the way that John the Baptist lived on locusts and honey. We know from our images of what he looked like. Man without credentials or authorization. So now the interrogation begins. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask who he was. But he failed to confess. But confess freely. I am not. I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, no, I am not. Finally asked, who are you? Give us an answer that we could take back to those who have sent us. What do you say about yourself? What do we say about ourselves? Finally, John replied with the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. I am the voice of the one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. That's what's being said to us, too. Now, the Pharisees, who had sent to question him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah or Elijah, not a prophet? And John answered, I baptize with water. But among you stands one who do, you do not know. He is the one that will come after me. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to even untie. This all happened at Bethany, the other side of Jordan, where John was baptizing. And we know with Bethany, Bethany was a place of rest. And that's where people went to rest, to relax, to rejuvenate, to meditate. The next day, John saw Jesus toward him and said, Look, Look, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God approaches who will take away the sins, the sins of the world. He then opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for forgiveness and sins will be for all people. For all people. But it will begin in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised you. But stay until the city, until you've been clothed with the power on high. Clothed on the power on high. Now we know he's talking to his 11 disciples. Now, we all know Thomas, doubting Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. We have seen the Lord, just as the children have seen the Lord. Have you 
seen the Lord? Do you accept the Lord and to know the Lord? But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and my hand into his side, I will not believe. That's what Thomas said. Doubting Thomas. Sometimes we're there, aren't we? We aren't too sure. We're not really sure what's happening. If it's really true or not true, where our lives begin and end, and all that goes in between the, the mountaintops and the valleys. Because in life, it never goes smooth like this. It's always up and down. There's always the things that into our lives, but God, through Jesus Christ, is saying, don't worry. Don't worry, for I am with you. And as I said at the beginning, if I am with you, nothing can ever come against you. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand. Put your hand into my side. Stop doubting and believe. That's what's said to us too. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. All of a sudden he realized that this was Jesus. And it was true. The resurrection did happen. And Jesus went on to send, Is it because you have seen me? You have believed? Blessed are those who have not seen but have believed. Blessed are those who have seen but believe. Where are we in our faith journey? Do we need to see? Or can we leave here and here in the resurrection of our Lord? Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All, all authority in heaven and on earth has given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So he's with us at all times. Always here with us. But these were written that you might believe that Jesus the Messiah is the Son of God, and that by believing you may have the life in his name. God had promised since the Old Testament days that he would restore restore and restore the people. He sent his son, his son Jesus, the Savior, who died and was raised to life so the people could be forgiven and brought into a relationship of peace and fellowship with God. Think about it. Peace and fellowship with God through Jesus Christ in heaven as we all come together and we're singing those hallelujahs for Christ has risen today hallelujah for Christ has risen today for you and for me then they gathered around him and asked Lord are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel he said to them it is not for you to know the times and all the dates. For the Father has set his own authority. But you will receive. You will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the entire ends of the world. People. We have that opportunity. We have that opportunity to be witnesses to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, to receive him as our personal Lord and Savior by asking him today into your life if you do not know him and to be assured of the eternal life. 
the eternal life of our Lord and Savior. And through that eternal life, we also are resurrected to him. And we also have the opportunity to sit with others that have gone on before us. I encourage you, believe, not because you have to see, believe because you know it's true that Christ has risen indeed today. He has risen indeed. He has risen. Amen.